so today uh, we will learn data page so in the last sessions we saw how data model and data objects works in pega and today we will be learning a data page so first we will understand what is data page and why we use this data page so what happens in any applications we need the data from different source okay so the source could be external applications or it can be our internal applications database or it could be some hard coded value okay which we will be using in our application okay or on the ui okay so let's see if you want to display uh, the list of employee drop down okay so that employee list can come from the external system or it can come from that local database okay so that we can display so we'll use this database in this kind of a places where we have to display the drop down or where we have to fetch some list okay and after that we want to process on that list okay so there are like various use case for this data pages okay we'll just go by the basics and we'll first understand okay the how the uh, when we create any database how the form looks like and what are the basic details which we need to Fits, okay so we can see that here i have written data page uh, data uh, sorry pega platform applications a data page retrieves the data from the specified data source so that is where i was explaining a specified source means wherever we we can give okay so there are like multiple sources from there we can fetch the data and caches the data in memory so this is very important point caches the data in memory okay so this is this is where the data page improves the application's performance okay because it won't go each time to check from the like the source system okay so again so the source system could be external system so let's say uh, there is a data which doesn't change very frequently okay and which we brings from that external system let's say employee list only so employee doesn't get added to any organizations okay very frequently like each and every minutes okay so what we can do we can fetch that employee list each every 24 hours okay so if we fetch every 24 hours okay so for that period okay during that 24 hours we can fetch the data from the caching instead of going each time to external system or to or to a local database so in that way we can reduce that uh, external call hit and improve the performance okay so this is like the one of the benefit of the data page okay data page okay so the source what the source we bring okay so the source it can be of two type okay so and that is where we call it structure in pega it can be a page or list okay so let's say we want to fetch the data okay for any organizations or like all employee list okay or the all id of that uh, all id id of all employee in any organization any particular reason so that will be a kind of a list okay where we are fetching the list of employees okay id or anything okay and what in what scenario we can use page page is where we have the defined key defined key means like where uh, we want to fetch only single id or let's say we want to pay pass sorry we, we want to pass the id and fetch that the details of the employee okay details of the employee id so basically it's like a, we are making a query okay in the where conditions we are giving the key okay so here in any table like in that employee table the key can be that employee id okay so in page we'll get one return one result okay and then in list we'll get multiple results but still that structure is a little different okay so we'll, we'll learn in in future classes okay how actually it looks like on the clipboard and the mode can be there are two type of mode okay like after the bringing the result okay what we want to do okay are we going to modify the same data okay or we we just take the data from this uh, database and use it in different places so if you want to use it in different places we use read only okay and if you want to modify the data we use editable so we'll this also will learn and then there are like a scope okay so there are like three scopes in pega like how we want to cache our data okay let's say that if you if if our application is pulling the data okay a stock uh, a stack a stock value okay for any uh, like company okay then that could be like a thread level so whenever i'm refreshing the page i should see that latest value so that means each time it will hit the server and bring the latest data the requester is whenever any user is logging okay so uh, it will persist till the user is logged off okay so let's say if i am logging so whatever the details okay for use any particular users okay all details will be stored okay on a requester level okay so that so that uh, the same data will not uh, fetched again and again for that user okay until analysis is logged off and then the node level 
so the node level is it will load the data okay at node level on a, on or one of the node of the server and it won't refresh until that server okay will will get re restarted okay so this is like the scope okay we have the mechanism to flush the data and reload the data so that also we learn and now let's go ahead uh, in pega and see this database how this looks like okay so let me open any database and as we were seeing okay so we'll see here so this is one of the uh, database which i've already created so i was explaining so here we can see the structure so we have the page and list and and this is the class for which class so the class is a map corresponding to the table or to the integration component okay so this is the class and the mode is read only uh, read only editable okay we have savable as well okay so that also we learn okay so this is like newly added from 7.x okay so we'll learn about this one as well and then we have a thread okay uh, then we have the scope so we in a scope we have a, a thread requester and node let me write savable as well here in mode okay so uh, we can see here a list okay and then we have uh, uh, sorry uh, the structure is list and a page and then object type and then we have the mode okay so there are like three kind of mode read only table and several and then a scope we have uh, requested thread and node okay so if i uh, like uh, okay uh, we have not generated any source for this one okay so it's a showing report definition so let's let's go ahead and, and um, uh, uh, we have not created any uh, cases for this one so currently if i run we'll get the blank okay uh, th there won't be any result okay so we'll create a new one fresh one and we'll learn so if i run also okay so there is some issue i'm not able to okay so i can execute it from here so we can see that there is there are zero results okay but because there is no result okay but before going to that before going to poc let's see how this database works okay what happens like we are saying about the caching and other things okay but how actually it works okay so let's let's understand from here okay so there is this is a very good example so the first one is the developer okay so what developer will de a developer creates the database by configuring the type as we were saying the type okay structure and the source of information to request the data from the data source okay so let's come again okay what are it talking okay so we have the type object type and then we have the structure okay and then we have the source okay so this is the three things it's just talking okay and uh, so source okay so any developer will create a database by giving these details okay so this is a very first step okay and now that that developer creates a database and developer will use this let's say the developer is using this database okay on a drop down of a ui okay now then what will happen step two okay if so a user requests data from the data page so what will happen a user attempts and actions that require information from the data page the system tries to retrieve the information from the data page so let's say any user is trying to select that employee id okay then what will happen okay then system will find out okay a system will try to retrieve the data from the source system and present to the user okay so this is the second step third step let's understand third step third step what will happen the system checks the whether the data is present in the memory so as i was saying okay the data it will present on the cache memory okay so it will check okay the present in the memory if necessary this uh, the application access the cache data on the data page so now system will check if the data is present on the cache memory it will take from the data okay now if the data doesn't present okay so let's see step four okay the system queries the data source okay so what will happen if the data system doesn't find that in the memory it will go to the actual source system okay so if the data piece is not found in the memory or is outdated the system queries the data source is found in the data piece for the information so this is the fourth step and then the fifth step okay the data source return the requested information thus filling in the data page okay so what will happen in step six uh, in step fifth okay it will bring the data okay so if data doesn't present on the memory it will go to the source system and brings the data and load and, and put it on the clipboard okay or in the cache memory in the in step six now we have the data the system presents the requested information to the user so now 
the data will show in the drop down so these are like the kind of the six step through which data page works okay so now let's go ahead and create a data type employee list okay add the data and we'll add on the ui okay so in the last class we have seen how we can create a data types okay so we'll today again we'll go and and create a data types from the app studio so we'll go to manage okay from manage we'll try to create new we'll add the date object name now we'll say define source later we'll say next and then we'll submit now we'll add the uh, attributes to this object let it refresh so we'll add to employee a list so employee data object came here now we'll add the attribute so we'll add a uh, minimum three four attributes so the first just uh, attribute would be employee id employee id submit another we'll just add first first name and then we'll add last name okay so we have added basics okay now we'll go to dev studio we'll generate the data source so basically we'll create a corresponding database table so if you go to data types okay here we can see that employee okay data type came uh, as i was explaining the last uh, sessions there is no expand icon here okay because the source has not been generated yet now we'll go and uh, generate the source okay so we'll go to records tab okay we'll configure source click on configure source and then we'll rearrange these things little bit okay first name last name we'll mark employee id, ID as a key okay and then from here only we can add a code so we'll say one two three four five and then we'll add first name first value we can add it from here as well so we'll add lily and then last name we'll use same and then submit now okay so we can add more records okay so now we, we should see that the first record will show here we will add one more uh, one or two more so it's taking little time to refresh okay so we can see employee id came first name last name came so we'll add i'll add uh, two more records so we'll add uh, one two three four five uh, zero, 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 one and then we'll add some thing and then we'll add another zero 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 two and then we'll add So this is fine now we'll use so if you see here in the source okay pega have created few data pages okay uh to pega have created few data pages to to fetch this or to access this data so we have employee we have employee list and we have a savable okay so let's see if we can use it from here only so this is like employee and if you see this is the page structure and this is a lookup okay so it will only fetch one record okay and in the parameter so basically in the where clause it will take the employee id so we can see that it's then the parameters if i try to run it let's say unfortunately this one it's not showing okay to pass the parameter and this browser but uh, ideally we should see here here that will ask for the parameter and we can pass the employee it will fetch the all the records okay okay so it came so let me 
um, put one two three four five okay and run it so if i run it here see we can see that we got the data okay so we can see employee id first name last name so on this page only we got this data okay in case of page okay in case of page here only we get the data let's see okay we have another data uh, source list employee okay so let me run this one as well Second, so there is some issue. Let me close this one and try to run. So it's not loading correctly in this uh, browser. So if you run this one, what will happen? Okay, it will return all the employee list. Okay, all the employee list which we can use it. So let's see if we can configure this one on our UI. Okay, so I have already created a case apply leaf okay so we'll go ahead okay so if i create here okay the ty is blank okay current ty is blank so i'll just try to add an employee drop down using that list so here we can see we have the blank okay so i'll quickly find out on the sections for this one and i'll go to that sections and then add that employee list so using the live ui i opened that sections now in that sections and i'll add that uh, drop down like i mean i'll add that uh, employee list as a drop down value and we'll see so this is in pega a rule set i need to save as in uh, our rule set application rule set so i'll simply save as in our class so our class is this one let's say our employee leave only so i'll save as in this one Ideally, we should have created our sections, but for now, I'm just showing we, uh, this is not best practice to save as Pega once. Okay, uh, we can create our sections and apply in, in like we can configure in our case management. So we'll learn later, but for now, learn this one. Okay, so I'll add um, a drop down. Okay, so we can go to pickers and we can say drop down. So now for any drop down, okay, we need a source. Okay, to display the values of drop down. Okay, so here. let it open okay so here it is saying okay define the source list source from where the source will come okay so we'll, we'll learn about the other one also but for now we want to use the database and the moment we select a database it is asking to give a database okay so one thing very important is that any database name start with t underscore okay so in previously we used to use declare underscore now it's a d underscore so we'll select d underscore employee list because we want to display all list and then what value we want to display in the drop down so we'll say say employee id okay employee id if you want to display name and then in the back and you want to save that employee ID, that can also be possible so now we'll submit it okay and here we can give any property for now okay or we can create let's say we can create employee id so that whatever the value will select okay it will go and save in this property so i'll create that property as well to show you on the clipboard okay so this is done and i'll just add action on change so that the value will quickly get refresh on the clipboard okay so on change and i'll just add a event a refresh i mean i should work with the post value but let me add refresh for now just refresh the sections okay so this is fine now we'll go ahead and create another case okay to see if we have got the drop down we'll save and close now i'll create another case so we can see here that uh, things came okay so we we got all employee id okay here in the drop down okay if i select anything and then if i go to clipboard if i select the work is there like many so it will be very little difficult open user portal let's see if we can see here on the py walk page let me submit and create a case then we'll see that 
py work page and there we can see that so we can see one case will get created here because i clicked on create it's taking a little time so we can see that a2 got created so now if if we open that clipboard okay we'll go to that a2 thread and if i navigate it to because that all case data is stored in py work page so if i go to py work page we'll find employee id equals to 002 so this is like this is how we can use the data page and when users like how like when when user is trying to select that value okay so this is the sixth step will get called okay this is the sixth step will get called okay and, and there are like more things we can say here like we can give default value if you want to give give or if, if we can give a placeholder like select employee ID and also these are the like kind of from the ui component okay so select employee id so these things we can give and if i create a case so by default the dead selected value will not come it will ask the user to choose so this is how we can use and this is a very simple use case i show i showed okay how we can use that employee id okay now let's talk a little bit about that savable data page okay because initially we missed that one so what is savable data page okay so let's say we are opening uh, like we selected here employee id 002 okay and in that uh, ui if you want to update few things so let's say the first name or last name or the phone or email id if you want to update okay so and then save it back to database so in that kind of a scenario we can use the savable database so using savable database we can face the data and then finally we can save it okay so this is like one of the other alternative of obc okay to save save it save the data back to that uh, our database so that usually we usually use with with the database not with that any external uh, like a source like kind of integration point or any other thing let's let's talk a little bit more about the source because we saw that here we are using a report definition so what basically report definition does is it forms that sql query connects to database okay and return the result so this is the pega database we are pulling the data what other alternate source we have so we can see here we have the connector so connector is basically here we can give a soap service or rest service okay so here like the supported services we have so we can give our connector name and then uh, once we give connector name it will ask it will ask to give a uh, connector name and then we can give a request and request response data transform to get to uh, send the request and get the data okay and use the data okay so this is like one of the connector and then we have um, robotic automations as well so that uh, we can we can see sometimes later and then we have activity or we have a data transform so these kind of a things also we can use okay and in that data transform or in activity in that activity we can write our logic that from where we want to bring the data okay so there are like some sources so this is on the definitions tab on the load management tab we have few things okay the first one is the clear uh, data page so let's say we have uh, like uh, we have some data okay which we have on the node label okay and the data got updated okay so but uh, and uh, the data got uploaded okay the data got updated in the source system okay now we have to refresh the data okay so as we discussed that node level data will not refresh until analysis we are not uh, recycling okay so they're like what is other alternative one other alternative is that we can clear the data page so from here we can i mean uh, like uh, some options is there from the admin studio also and from the developer also they can say plus all and submit it okay so once they will do the entire things will get cleaned up and the next time when user will try to access it will rebuild the data so basically it will try to reload the data from that database it won't fetch the data from the castle okay here this is very one important we have the reload once per interaction so when we usually use this one when we want to reload like load the data from the database or from the source each time okay as i mentioned like for if we are using let's say for a stock fetching the stock details then we find we want the latest data whenever we are trying to access the ty or refreshing so that kind of a scenario we can use this one okay and then do not reload when we can add a condition also that in these situations don't uh, reload the data okay let's say uh, we are trying to access the stock data okay after hours okay let's say on the weekends okay on sunday so the value won't change so there is no point of refreshing the data each time we can add conditions that if that uh, if it is saturday or sunday don't reload the data and this is one of the important things is reload if older than okay 
so reload if older than means like let's say that uh, we want to reload the data if the data is older than 24 hours okay let's say 24 hours or 5 hours so let's say we are assuming that employee id will not get it uh, i mean employee id will not add it very frequently but still okay we want to reload the data each 24 hours so that any if any new employee id got added okay any new employee id joins that any organization that will reflect it after 24 hours in that case we can say 24 hours so even though let's say if we if you have created a data page okay on node level okay so the node level, node level database will not refresh until we refresh, restart the server so in that case what we can give we can give a, a reload if older than so we can use this refresh strategy so what will happen the system will automatically refresh the data after 24 hours so basically after 24 hours the data will set as expire okay after that what will happen whenever whenever not exactly after 24 hours it will reload the data after 24 hours it will expire the data okay and then after that whenever the first time any user is trying to access that employee ID list it will rebuild the, rebuild the data okay and then again it will happen after the same 24 hours so this is how it works and the parameter steps we can give the conditions okay like kind of a parameter what all attributes based on that we want to load the so, uh, data and then rest will will learn sometime uh, later like pages and uh, pages and classes test cases like for the unit test so this is on a high level we we show that uh, uh, what is data page and how we can use it there, there is another also key page access so we'll learn these things later okay and then also we can define source from where the source like we can give the system name okay from where we want to fetch the data okay uh, also if you we can add alternate source so let's say initially we are building a service for uh, like we are trying to access a data from external source but that that source is not available when we are starting the development so what we can do instead of connectors we can use data transform we can set hard coded value and use it and based on our conditions and then later we can change that source to actual connector so that will get the data so, so that in that way what will happen our development will not stop or like you can use uh, various conditions like uh, depending on your business needs and you can face the data from uh, different sources okay and then we have a post load uh, processing also okay so if after fetching the data if you want to do some calculations if you want to do some exception handling and few things so in that way you can use uh, post load processing so this is this is the database on a high level i hope this will give some some informations to you okay uh, and if you have any query or questions uh, post it in the comment and then we can uh, discuss in our next session uh, thank you thank you very much